Today, we are playing a game about basic emergency interventions. But in the real world, this is no game. In an emergency, minutes matter, and you have the power to save someone's life. Here's how the game will work. Each team will be asked questions about basic emergency procedures. If the team gets it right, they'll get a point. But if they get it wrong, our experts are here to explain the correct answers. So let's welcome our experts. Today we have Cheryl Rickens, a nurse and an EMS specialist from the UPMC Minutes Matter team. And we have Antoine Carter, District Chief of the City of Pittsburgh Bureau of Emergency Medical Services. And let's meet our two teams. Team number one is Finn and Austin. And for team number two, we have Gabby and Naya. All right, round one is all about chest compressions. True or false, CPR stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Finn. True. Austin. True. Naya. True. Gabby. True. All right, you guys are all correct. Good job. True or false, if you suspect someone in cardiac arrest, you should start chest compressions immediately. Finn. True. Austin. False. Naya. False. Gabby. False. And the answer is true. So Finn got it correct. Let's turn to our panel of experts. Yes, it's true. You should start chest compressions immediately, but you should also direct somebody to call 911. All right, let's go on to the next question. True or false? CPR must always be performed in conjunction with mouth to mouth. Finn. False. Austin. False. Naya. False. Gabby. False. Wow, you guys were all correct. True or false? The best way to perform chest compressions is by pushing down at the top of the person's chest using your hands only. Finn. I think that's true. Austin. False. Naya. True. Gabby. I'm also gonna go with true. So the answer is actually false. So the ideal positioning for doing chest compressions is the center of the chest at the nipple line. Next question, true or false? You have to complete CPR certification in order to perform CPR. Finn? False. Austin? False. Naya? False. Gabby? False. You guys are actually all correct. Anyone can be a good Samaritan by chest compressions because any intervention is better than doing nothing. All right, next question, true or false? If you are performing CPR, you do not need to call 911. Finn? False. Austin? True. Naya? I'm gonna say false. And Gabby? False. All right, we had a mixed group there as well, and the answer is false. For any medical emergency, you should call 911. Remember, chest compressions restore circulation that has stopped due to the cardiac arrest. That's why hands-only CPR is important because it makes a difference and can save a life. Excellent job, everybody. On to round two, automated external defibrillator. True or false? An AED analyzes a heart's rhythm and can deliver an electrical shock to reestablish an effective heartbeat. Naya. True. Austin. True. Finn. True. Gabby. True. Excellent job, everybody. You guys got it all right. True or false? An AED should always be used in conjunction with chest compressions. Naya. I'm going to say true. Austin. I think this is true. Finn. I think I'm going to go with false. And Gabby. I think it's true. Well, an easy way to remember this is, if you're doing chest compressions, you're also using an AED. All right, on to the next question. True or false? An AED can be used instead of chest compressions. Naya. True. Austin. False. Finn. False. And Gabby. I'm also gonna go with false. All right, remember, if someone's experiencing cardiac arrest, you need to start chest compressions immediately and then apply the AED as soon as it's available. True or false, an AED is used when someone has had a head or brain injury. Naya. True. Austin. False. Ben. False. And Gabby. False. Let's hear from our panel of experts as to why it's false. An AED is used only for cardiac arrest emergencies. 
So next question, true or false? Only an EMS or a trained health professional should use an AED. Naya. True. Austin. True. Ben. I think I have to go with false. And Gabby. I'm also going to go with false. All right, we have a totally split, split group here. So why is it false? Well, anyone can use an AED. AEDs will give you both verbal and visual prompts to guide you through the entire process. All right, next question, true or false? Two minutes of CPR must occur before applying the AED to the victim. Naya. False. Austin. False. Finn. True. And Gabby. False. All right, the answer is false. Panel of experts? Yes. You should apply the AED as soon as it's available. Next question, true or false? If alone with a sudden cardiac arrest victim, you should call 911 and then get an AED. Naya. False. Austin. That's false. Finn. False. Gabby. False. It's actually true. All right, panel of experts. Birds, can you explain to us why? If you are alone with a sudden cardiac arrest victim, you need to call 911 and then get an AED. If there are other people around, delegate someone to call 911. Delegate someone to get the AED and then someone else can start chest compressions. Early CPR and early defibrillation can double or triple the chance of survival for a cardiac arrest victim. So minutes really do matter with CPR and AED application. All right, round two. Do you guys feel like you're experts already? You guys are doing a great I job. I I would do better, but I'm happy that I'm learning. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. There's a lot to learn, but again, we are learning things that will help to save someone's life. Yes, round I Round three know. is all about stopping the bleed. Oh. All right, true or false? Someone can bleed to death in as little as five minutes without any intervention. All right, I'm gonna start with Austin this time. That is true. Gabby. True. Naya. True. Finn. I'm also gonna go with true. You are all correct. It is true. Someone can bleed to death in as little as five minutes without any intervention. All right, next question. True or false? You should always call 911 right away before trying to stop the bleeding. Austin. That is false. Gabby. Uh, I'm gonna go with true. Naya. False. And Finn. Um, I think it kind of depends, because if there's someone else, then they should be calling 911, but I think you should stop the bleed right away. So, true or false, what are you thinking? I think I'm gonna go true. All right, well again, we have a mixed bag here and the answer is true. Yes, yeah, so you should call 911, but you also need to remember your safety first and then think of the ABCs. A is to be alert and aware and call 911. B is for bleeding. You need to find the source of the bleeding. And then C is for compression. You need to hold pressure on the wound. But the most important thing is to call 911. All right, true or false? The only way to stop bleeding is to hold pressure on the wound. Austin. That's false. Gabby. That's true. Naya. I'm gonna say true. And Finn. I am also gonna say true. All right, the answer is actually false. Now, panel of experts, why would that be false? There's actually three things that you can do. The first thing is to hold pressure on the wound. Another thing you can try is to pack or stuff the wound. And then the third thing to do in extreme cases it's, is, is to apply a tourniquet. Next question, true or false? You can only use gauze from a first aid kit to pack or stuff a wound. Austin? That is false. Gabby? I'm also gonna go with false. All right, Naya? I'm gonna go with false too. And Finn? I'm gonna go false. You guys are all correct. It is false because to stop the bleed, you can use gauze or even some type of cloth like a t-shirt. All right, true or false? A tourniquet can be used to stop profound or massive bleeding to extremities such as arms and legs. Austin. That's true. Gabby. Not exactly sure what it is, but I'm going to say true. Naya. 
I'm gonna say true too. And Finn. I'm gonna go true as well. All right, you guys were all correct. The answer is true. A tourniquet can be used to stop profound or massive bleeding to extremities such as arms and legs. Now, panel of experts, would you mind explaining what a tourniquet is real quick? So a tourniquet is a device that was established uh, probably during the Vietnam era war in which it was used to stop profound bleeding. Uh, it is to shut off blood um, and circulation to give a chance for them to surgically stop the bleeding if necessary. It's a device over the last several years that has uh, a winding method that once turned and applied around the extremity can shut off the bleeding itself to control the bleeding until again, the bleeding can be controlled by other methods. Round three is complete. And I'd love to hear how the experts thought all the teams did. Everybody did really well. It's important to remember that when someone's bleeding uncontrollably, minutes matter. So act fast and stop the bleed. We are down to round four, which is all about the Narcan. True or false? Some common signs of an opiate overdose are loss of consciousness, unresponsiveness, and slow breathing. Austin, what do you think? True or false? I think that is true. Finn? I'm gonna go true as well. Gabby? True. And Naya? I'm also gonna say true. You guys are all right. The answer is true. Some common signs of an opioid overdose are loss of consciousness, unresponsiveness, and slow breathing. All right, true or false, after calling 911, there's nothing you can do to help an overdose person until help arrives. Austin? I think that is false. Finn? Hmm, I think false. Gabby? I also think false. And Naya? I'm also gonna say false. You guys are all correct. It is false. Now, panel of experts, what are some things that they can do to help? Well, they can start by checking um, their pulse. They can also start uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR. They can lay a per person on their side and they can wait and call 911 or delegate someone to call 911 for help and additional resources. All right, true or false, Narcan, the brand name for naloxone, is a drug used to reverse the effects of opioid overdose. True or false, Austin? That is true. Finn? Hmm, I think true. Gabby? I'm gonna say true. And Naya? I'm also gonna say true. All right, we're all in agreement here. Narcan, the brand name for naloxone, is a drug used to reverse the effects of opioid overdose. Okay, next question. True or false? Narcan is harmful to use if someone is not actually overdosing. Austin? I think that is true. Finn? I think true. Gabby? True. And Naya? I'm also going to say true. Well, the answer is actually false. So let's go ahead to our panel of experts to explain. There are no uh, side effects if given to someone that is not having an opiate overdose. Naloxone or Narcan is safe to be used in those situations. It's wow. better to give than not to give. All right, true or false? Narcan comes in both nasal spray and injectable forms. Austin. That is true. Ben. True. Gabby. True. And Naya. I'm also gonna say true. All right, you guys were all correct on that one. Narcan comes in both nasal spray and injectable forms. Good job. All right, panel of experts, how did our teams do during round four? They're doing great. It is better to give the drug than to not give it in order to save a life. All right, round five. Communicating with EMS and how to effectively call 911. All right, our first question is true or false. You should not call 911 unless you are sure it is a true, true emergency. Austin. That is false. Finn. False. Gabby. False. Naya. I'm also gonna say false. Wow, you guys were all correct. Even if you're not really sure, the 911 dispatcher will guide you through a list of questions to properly uh, make sure that it's not an emergency. 
and it'll determine what type of resource you need. All right, true or false? It's not safe to have EMS come into your house during the coronavirus pandemic. Austin. That is false. Ben. I'm gonna go with false. Gabby. I'm also gonna go with false. Naya. I'm gonna go with false as well. Wow, you guys are killing it. You guys all got it right. It is false. Your first responders and emergency personnel are trained to deal with the coronavirus. We're all equipped with our own forms of PPE and training to go along so that we can make sure we can provide medical treatment for you and your family. Wow, that's excellent news. Good to know. All right, true or false? The emergency department is the best place to take someone in an emergency. Austin. That is definitely false. Finn. I'm gonna go true. Gabby. I think I'm gonna go false. And Naya. I'm gonna go with false as well. All right, we've got a mixed group here. The emergency room is equipped to handle all of your emergencies, so that is the best place to take it during an emergency. So next question is true or false? You should know the address or landmarks of your location when calling 911. Austin. True. Ben. Definitely true. Gabby. True. And Naya. Most definitely true. Wow, you guys definitely killed it on that one. Definitely true. All right, that was the final round, round five. Panel of experts, how did the teams do this time around? They did absolutely great. In the event that you don't know the address immediately, try to find like a piece of mail or something that can aid you in when you call 911 and the dispatcher can get some more information. And even a cell phone call, they can sort of track your location through that as well. One more thing, when you're calling 911, don't hang up. Answer all the questions from the 911 dispatcher and stay on the phone until the professional responders arrive. All right, we tallied up the scores and looks like we have a winner. So congrats Finn and Austin, but you guys all did an excellent job. We had a lot of fun with this game, but remember in an emergency, minutes matter. Well, you know what to do? Basic education saves lives. Learn more at minutesmatter.upmc.com.